So you're back for a number of, for a number of years, a special kind of fall. Mm -hmm. um, why so long and why such a curious title? Um, the length of time that I took off to do music, I was still making music, I just wasn't putting music out. Mm. Um, just needed a break, really needed to step back from what I was doing. I'd been running at the running at the gate for such a long time and doing so much stuff, I just exhausted myself. And also, I wasn't really living my life right, so I just needed to kind of calm down a little bit and just take some time out. And took time out whilst making this music. So, the um, just paid attention to the music a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And was I've always been someone that doesn't really go with what people are doing or what the everyone else is doing. I didn't need to do it. So, I really didn't feel like I needed to be rushing to put music out yeah. even though I was ready like 2007 2008 2009 you know I had music ready to go I just didn't really I just took my time mm -hmm. to do it and because I'm funding it all myself yeah it just takes a little longer uh, can you tell us a bit about the, sort of like the title behind the special kind of fool? oh um, the title special kind of fool is I, I kind of I like the title because it kind of, in one context, is calling you an idiot, mm. but in another context, it's empowering you by saying, Do you know what, yeah, I'm that special kind of fool that, you know, you, you think I'm a fool, but I'm not a fool. And I think that's pretty representative of how I carry myself generally. So I'm quite funny, but I'm very serious. So it's, it's kind of a play on words, really. It's like a... Um, as far as being a member of the hip hop community in the in the world and being a member of the hip hop community in the UK, I feel like we are looked upon as idiots sometimes yeah. by people who you don't understand what we're doing musically. So and, you know, and I, when I say hip hop, people think I I don't mean all of the, I mean every single facet of uh, urban music where people are rapping over music. It yeah. comes from hip hop. Yeah. So people might think they're not hip hop, but they are because if you're using CDJs, turntables and a microphone, you're a hip hop artist. Yeah. You, are, you, you, you are coming from a hip hop. Um, hip hop has influenced what you're doing. Yeah. Even if you're doing dance and trance, it's influenced you. So I feel like sometimes the mainstream music situation really looks upon what we're doing with, and doesn't give us the credit or, this, or the, the, uh, the respect that it deserves. Mm -hmm. So I really, my project, I'm really trying to carry myself in a particular way that kind of really conveys that you need to talk to me like a fully grown man. Right. You need to listen to my music like a fully grown artist. And you need to appreciate what I'm doing like you'd appreciate Elton John, like you'd appreciate uh, Coldplay, mm -hmm. like you'd appreciate uh, Bob Geldof or how you'd appreciate Sting. Mm -hmm. I am looking to at some point be respected in the same way not just be respected like Snoop Dogg or Puff Daddy or that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to be taken seriously. Right. So um, how does it compare with the albums before it? Is it more the same sound? Um, totally different. I would say um, my albums are consistent. I've, from the offset, I was really trying to always push a live, uh, well, a, a hip hop music that would move that didn't just stay within an eight bar, four bar structure. And I think this album is just more intense, more um, beat heavy, and also just really brings forth the hip hop aspect. Mm -hmm. I'm really not, on previous albums I've kind of showed off a little bit like, oh look, we can do this, we can do a kind of Brazilian vibe, we can do, you know, a Latin vibe, we can do a broken beat vibe, we can do an Indian vibe, we can do whatever. But with this record, I'm really like focused on the hip hop vibe. Like I really want, I feel like hip hop music has been a sidelined yeah. as, as, as like not, like you're getting patted on the back for doing music. And if it has some element of hip hop music in it, you're like, people give you credit because you did something different than hip hop. And I'm like, no, give me credit for the hip hop now. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Can you tell us a bit what inspired, like what fueled its creation? What fueled um, this album was real life. So, um, because I was uh, taking time out, I got a little bit ill, and I just needed to kind of repair myself. 
Um, I really try to draw on regular things, regular um, experiences, because I feel like coming from the UK and being a hip hop artist, it's like we are, there's a real open avenue for expression. Yeah. As far as like um, the fields for what we can talk about are so wide but we don't do it, we still stay within the confines of what American culture does. Yeah. So if American culture talks about the street, we'll talk about the street. Mm -hmm. If American culture talks about my pain, my Tupac pain, mm -hmm. then we'll do that. So what I wanted to do is just set some new parameters that have got nothing to do with what anyone else has done before. So um, on the album, I talk about, oh, there's a song called Falling mm -hmm. with Sean Escoffrey, where I'm talking about the fact that a lot of people are falling. And a lot of people, whether it's um, through love, whether it's through uh, financial pressure, whether it's through depression, it, it, has, it is actually, a, a, um, it's a normal thing now. Yeah. And it's interesting that even as I'm bringing the record out, you know, you had um, Steve McQueen, or is it Alex McQueen? I can't remember, the, the fashion designer. Oh, Alexander. Yeah, you know, uh, him. But then there was another actor recently who committed um, suicide. suicide. Yeah. And it's like, it's so much more common in regular life mm. that I wanted to kind of address that. I kind of felt like I went through a little bit of a depression when I was ill and I wanted to reflect rather than be like, oh, woe is me, blah, blah, blah. I actually turned it on its head and made it useful by actually immersing myself in it and then writing about um, how I see the world through this perspective. So we did that. Um, there's a song called I'm Leaving, which is a record that is really close to my heart because I wrote it for two people. I wrote it for my niece who passed away and I wrote it for um, my partner, my music partner, Drew's dad, who passed away while we were making the record. So, you know, we, rather than make it just a tribute song to him, it's more a tribute song for everybody that's ever lost anyone. Yeah. And, you know, when you, when you lose people, when they pass away, there's an element, there's a time where when you first hear that they've gone, your mind and your body cannot catch up with the idea that you'll never see them again, mm -hmm. that you'll never speak to them again, that you'll never laugh, with that all of these things happen. And there's a moment where you are realizing, you know what, I would give, what I would give to have 10 more minutes of dialogue with this person. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to do is make a song where if it was a video for it, the person would not just be an angel, but the person would be almost like there with you in real life, yeah, yeah. but not be visible and just saying, you know, I haven't actually left. I know I've gone, I'm leaving, but I'm here. Like, you know, we have this dialogue. We, you know, like, you know, it's just, it's really important. I think for people, especially people that have, you know, got pe uh, parents dying stuff, it's important that they understand I think it's really important to convey the idea that even though your relative is left, yeah. because they raised you and because they uh, gave you so much, they're not gone. Yeah. They, you know, they, they, they've no longer physically saying anything, but they've set up a parameter and they set up a child and a, a person. And you know, there's still some sort of kind of connection. Yeah. So to kind of just enjoy that and celebrate that. And I wanted to do that musically. So I did that in the song. And once again, I'm not following the, um, the tenets of what has happened before as I'm not waiting for Tupac to make a record mm -hmm. even now yeah. and um, about certain things I'm like okay I'm a fully grown man I can make my own um, decisions mm -hmm. about the style of uh, expression that I choose so we do, we're just doing all types of things in this record but it's not boring it's not all heavy and um, like locking you down it's just like I really I feel like I'm talking to young people right. old people and everybody that really views hip hop music a particular way, and I'm saying, no, you can do more. We can do a hell of a lot more with yeah. this. So I'm doing it musically.